Okay, today we're going to be talking about what to do when CO2 is leaking down the barrel of your paintball gun. Now, most commonly it's the cup seal. However, there are other times when there are approximately four things that can that can happen that can cause CO2 to leak down the barrel. Um, first step that everyone does is replace the cup seal and 90% of the time that fixes it. But for the other 10% of the people out there, a lot of them are struggling with how to fix this and what the problem can't be or could possibly be. So I'm going to go through literally how to troubleshoot everything and it's not going to take long at all. So I'm going to show you what we got going on here. I'm going to go ahead and take the barrel off this gun. Now we're working with a Diablo Mongoose here. I'm just going to take the barrel off. It's going to make it easier to work with and let me show you what exactly is going on. So what we have is I've actually already replaced the cup seal on this marker and if I threw in my tank As you can hear, CO2 is just pouring out of the barrel. So it's pretty easy. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, this is not required as if you've watched the cup seal video, but it makes working on everything way easier. So I'm going to take these two screws out that I'll hold the, um, where the CO2 tank bolts in. I'm just going to take these screws out with a Phillips screwdriver. It only takes a few seconds and it just makes everything else that you do uh, much easier to work on. I'm getting this out of the way and no longer supported by the hand grip. Okay, so now that we've got that done, the next step, I'm going to briefly cover the cup seal. So we're going to, we're going to take out this Allen screw right here. We're going to remove this one. And that's going to let us get to the cup seal and the valve body, the CO2 valve. And really, the great thing about working on these are you really don't need many tools. Usually a screwdriver, um, the Allen wrench, which most paintball markers come with the Allen wrench. And besides that, um, you basically just need uh, a nice O-ring kit because that, in general, is what goes wrong um, anytime there's a problem. I know this is taking longer than normal. It's hard to uh, get in there and do this and avoid the blocking the view on the camera. So, okay. so I get that out. I'm gonna remove this. And if you watch my other video, the Cup seal is the number one thing that can generally cause this. So I'm just going to show you the cup seal again. The cup seal goes down in there. But sometimes it's not the cup seal, as you can see on this marker, because I I've replaced the I've replaced that already. There's the cup seal. I've replaced it and it's still leaking. So I want to cover how to troubleshoot it from there. Now there are generally only about three other things that can go bad or that could be the problem. Um, to really work with any of this, we're gonna need to remove these other two. One at the back, and most markers are very similar. It's usually just two, um, two of these Allen screws, and that's gonna drop the trigger assembly. Now it's a little more kind of a pain on this Mongoose, just because it's got an electronic eye so that it doesn't chop balls. But what that eye actually does is causes this even after we remove the after we remove this, we're gonna have to deal with the wire, but it'll be fine. Okay. So this is what we have. Now sometimes I don't have a good answer for why this happens, but this is one of the easiest things to troubleshoot and test. Sometimes if your gun all of a sudden starts leaking CO2, um, you've made sure it's not the cup seal. It's this screw right here. This is usually a brass screw. Um, it's it's nothing, it's called a it's called a CO2 valve screw. And in general, the problem is it's too tight or too loose. 
So it's a standard flat screwdriver on most guns. And generally you'll find this valve just needs to be hand tight, literally. So that would be the second thing to check, simply because this doesn't require any parts. So hook your CO2 up, try adjusting that, that screw, tightening it, loosening it, um, finding a sweet spot. Um, if it's too loose, it'll let CO2 leak, but generally it'll let CO2 leak out the bottom and not into the barrel. If it's too tight, it puts too much pressure on the valve, on the CO2 valve, and actually kind of, um, you want to say warp, or it kind of bends it away from the frame and, and creates just enough of a gap. So that's something to check. That's the second thing to check. Now, I'm going to remove this just so we can get to the valve because that encompasses the last two problems that you're going to see. Now, to get it out, I'm going to go ahead and build strip. Which I hope you know how to do. Now that I've removed this screw that we just saw, I can I can actually remove the valve from here. Generally, you'll need something long to stick down in there to kind of push it out for you. So I'm just using I'm just using the screwdriver. And here is the valve. Now, the two problems that you can see with this, uh, one, um, the problem with this, it may be hard, I'll, I'll show it to you, it may be obvious, um, but uh, the two problems that you generally see with these, a lot of times because of dirt or some sort of foreign debris getting inside there, you can have some scoring marks on the valve seat here and that'll prevent the cup seal from, from sealing. Now, I'm not gonna go into the complicated matter of possibly you can, you can polish it and possibly remove those defects. In general, what I do, if, if you find out that there's just some defects or notches or scratches in there and that's causing your leak, I would just replace this. They're not expensive parts, but hopefully the camera can show you. Here's what's going on on my paintball marker. This, look at that. It just fell right off. It was already broken. So the other O-ring looks good, but this one had completely deteriorated, and you know how they how they get after they've set up. So let me go get some O-rings. We're going to replace that, and hopefully we'll get this fixed. Okay. Now, even though I had one of the seals that wasn't bad, I just think it's a good practice. You're already in there, so I went ahead and replaced the O-rings on both sides. Um, really no reason not to and if anything you've just given yourself some extra life so then we're simply going to replace this and replacing this the the trick to replacing this is lining up is lining up the smaller hole there's a hole on top and bottom the one on the bottom is a little smaller you're going to line it up and push it in here and you're gonna have to keep pushing it until that hole lines up with where we took that brass screw out and with your new o-rings on there it may be a little more difficult to, to get going so so you can see it coming in the play and we're almost there and now I'm going to have to stick something in there to kind of twist it and get it lined up. And be careful not to damage it. Now it's lined up. We're going to put our screw back in. And as I'm sure you know this, I recommend you not reassemble your gun the entire way until you verify you have fixed the leak. I'm just going to barely tighten this until it's what you would call hand tight. And 
we're going to put put our cup seal back. Okay, that's good and tight. So now, before we reassemble everything up, I'm just going to hook the tank up. Make sure we've solved that mass of CO2 leak. Don't know if you heard that, but it's sealed up just fine. Now we can continue with reassembling the... Uh, rest of the gun um, so if you found what you need to know from here you can go ahead and uh, kind of abandon this video since you got your knowledge otherwise keep watching and um, I'll show you how to reassemble it Now we've got the gun reassembled. All that's left is to put back the bolt and hammer. All that good stuff. So hopefully you know how to the direction it goes in. You've got the flat part that has to go down. That's how the trigger releases it. And this is the part that hits the cup seal and releases the CO2. So generally you just get it started in there and then you'll almost always have to stick something down in here and push down on the, basically the, the part that the trigger releases just to get this uh, hammer in. And we'll put the bolt in. push down on this pin and line it up with the hole that's in the hammer so now they work together replace the spring for the hammer
And now, other than putting the barrel back on, we are good to go. Now we can get back to doing what we came here to do. And that is how you troubleshoot virtually any problem with CO2 leaking down the barrel. Hope that helps.